the City of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stratton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manopara. Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 82560500. Did you know your food scraps should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment. It's the right thing to do. And it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playfoot.sa.gov.au slash fight food waste. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as enhancing your own mental health and well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Feedback about our city's future from our community is really important. It helps us prioritise your needs when planning services, projects and other initiatives. A convenient way to have your say and stay in the loop on any upcoming consultations is by registering your details on our Engagement Hub website at playford.engagementhub.com.au We look forward to hearing from you. Have you visited the Stratton Centre on Peachy Road, Manapara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day. There's also state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops and networking, as well as training for young kids right through to adults, plus the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stratton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manopara. Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 82560500. Did you know your food scraps should go in the green bin or a home compost system? 
It's better for the environment. It's the right thing to do. And it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playfit.sa.gov.au slash fight food waste. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as enhancing your own mental health and well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Feedback about our city's future from our community is really important. It helps us prioritise your needs when planning services, projects and other initiatives. A convenient way to have your say and stay in the loop on any upcoming consultations is by registering your details on our Engagement Hub website at playford.engagementhub.com.au We look forward to hearing from you. Have you visited the Stratton Centre on Peachy Road, Manapara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day. There's also state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops and networking, as well as training for young kids right through to adults, plus the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stratton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manopara. Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 8256 0500. Did you know your food scraps should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment. It's the right thing to do. And it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playfood.sa.gov.au slash fight food waste. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Want to get involved in your community? 
There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as enhancing your own mental health and well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Feedback about our city's future from our community is really important. It helps us prioritise your needs when planning services, projects and other initiatives. A convenient way to have your say and stay in the loop on any upcoming consultations is by registering your details on our Engagement Hub website at playford.engagementhub.com.au We look forward to hearing from you. Have you visited the Stratton Centre on Peachy Road, Manapara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day. There's also state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops and networking, as well as training for young kids right through to adults, plus the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stratton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manopara. Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 8256 0500. Did you know your food scraps should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment. It's the right thing to do. And it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playfood.sa.gov.au slash fight food waste. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as enhancing your own mental health and well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Feedback about our city's future from our community is really important. It helps us prioritise your needs when planning services, projects and other initiatives. A convenient way to have your say and stay in the loop on any upcoming consultations is by registering your details on our Engagement Hub website at playford.engagementhub.com.au We look forward to hearing from you.
my councillors as the time being 7.34 p.m. The meeting now resumes. Our adjournment is over, so we'll now carry on the meeting. We've opened our meeting. I'll now go to the acknowledgement of country. We'd like to acknowledge that this land that we meet on today is the traditional land of the Ghana people, that we respect their spiritual relationship with their country, and the city of Playford would also like to pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. We'll now go to the attendance record. Everybody is present. We'll go to the confirmation of minutes of the Ordinary Council meeting held on the 23rd of May 2023 be confirmed as a true and accurate record of proceedings. Somebody wish to move that way? So moved. Moved by Councillor Smallwood-Smith. Does it find a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Onyazans. I'm presuming there's no changes or corrections to the said minutes. Does anyone wish to speak to the minutes? If not, then I'll put those. Those in favour, those against, I declare that carried. Go to item three, declarations of interest. Are there any? Councillor Carlson. Yes. So I have um, general conflict of interest with item 17.1. Um, I can't divulge the nature of the conflict without divulging the contents of the confidential report. Um, but I would like to advise I have an association with the matter of um, the matters on the item and I will leave the room when this comes up. Thank you, Councillor. Any other declarations of interest? Councillor Van Der Thank you, Mayor. I also would like to declare a general conflict of interest in item 17.1, strategic land purchase, um, for the same reasons um, that Councillor Carlson explained, um, and I will also leave the room. Thank you, Councillors. Are there any other declarations of interest? If not, we go on to item four, Mayor's report. Uh, a number of different items throughout uh, the month due to the long night. I won't read them all there um, for you. You can read them at your leisure. Um, I'll take that um, as read. So we'll go on to item five, reports of representatives of council and other organisations. Are there any? No, go to item six, report by councillors. I presume most people have submitted their reports, I'll take them as noted, unless there's something that needs to be added. Councillor Bayani? Yes, I would like to talk about the reports. Yeah. yeah. I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude towards uh, Council and staff for taking the elected member on a service to for the city of play for today. For all the effort in organizing and making this happen, uh, showcasing um, various sites such as Civic Center, the library, the Shedley, Gainville uh, Community Hub, Elizabeth Rice Services, Prison Hub, and the Northern Sound System have been truly commendable. It was a great opportunity for the elected members, especially for the new elected members, to experience how services are delivered throughout Playful City and how they are catering to the residents in difficult times. All the staffs and volunteers delivering those services in the sites demonstrated their commitment to servicing, to service the community and making a positive impact in people's life every day across the city of Playford. And I would like to send my best wishes and thank you for all your outstanding effort and keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pani. No other reports in the Ghana reports of representatives, conferences and training programs. Councillor Smallwood Smith. Thank you, Your Worship. It's not very long and I'll read quickly. Um, I attended the National General Assembly in Canberra a couple of weeks ago. On day one, there were 1,100 people in attendance, one of the largest audiences ever. The opening address was given by His Excellency Governor General, the Honourable David Hurley, followed by LGA President, President Councillor Linda Scott, ALGA President, who spoke about local government being forced into selling land on floodplains to allow affordable housing to be built. This was a big talking point with delegates. We were told $100 million has been allocated to this project. His Excellency, and I apologise if I don't get his name right, His Excellency Vassal Myra Shinoshenko, Australia Ambassador for Ukraine, spoke of the hardships being faced by the Ukrainian people 
coping with devastation of their country. He suggested cities in Australia might consider becoming sister cities with the Ukraine city to take on a fundraising project to assist the Ukraine. And I believe Tea Tree Gully um, here in South Australia has done that. Peter Dutton, Liberal leader, spoke about the important role played by local government. This brought a question from a delegate who asked him, if the government puts such value on local government, then why are we not being afforded the third tier of government? This brought great applause. Another question was as to why the Liberal Party, when in power, did nothing about the affordable housing in over 10 years. Interesting panel in the afternoon with Dr Jonathan Carr West, CEO of Local Government Unit from UK. Along with him was Talia Azaria, Director of the Young Mayors Program. A panel to discuss building a strong workforce with three mayors included the mayor from Mitcham here in South Australia. A panel on Thursday was led by Brendan Moon, coordinator of General National Emergency Management Agency. This gave delegates an insight into how emergencies on a grand scale are handled. It was quite a successful and interesting conference and I thank the elected members for electing me to attend. Thank you, Councillor Smallwood-Smith. Councillor Norris. Thank you. Hopefully I don't repeat too much of what's already been said, but I'll just skim <laughs> over what I've got. Um, my first thing, obviously, was to say thank you for letting us represent you um, in Canberra. Always insightful, absolutely love my time over there and listening to and even speaking with a lot of other councils and what they've been going through, um, including their own business plans, which some councils were up around the 12, 15% mark. So, you know, we're not alone. Um, just to give some insight, I guess, to residents as well, the National Assembly provides us, Playford Council, essentially with an opportunity to network and understand the challenges and also the triumphs that face councils across Australia. Um, some of the major themes that were discussed included disaster planning, which has, I think, been on the agenda for a number of years and I think something that we very much work closely with and, and need to obviously plan for. Um, funding allocations and opportunities um, from fe uh, federal and state governments, the re-establishment of the Australian Council of Local Government, renewable energy, climate change, transport, and of course the massive concern at the moment with housing and homelessness. Um, obviously, I guess with the cost of living and just everything that's going on, it's a big issue. Um, councils ended up putting forward approximately 260 motions, which we kind of had to skim through because we actually run short on time. Um, we heard from guest speakers, including the federal members, uh, the Honourable Catherine King, Honourable uh, Christy McBain, the Honourable Peter Dutton, Honourable Darren Chester, as well as His Excellency, is it, and this is where we, the pronunciation, Vashel Mershenko, uh, the Ukrainian ambassador, <laughs> um, who was also there last year, but you know, everything that he's shared with what's going on, you know, you've just got to feel for them and, and it's really good to see support coming from the local council as well. Um, I found the conference exceptionally insightful, um, as I said, for disaster planning, as obviously we have flood plains in the Gawler River, uh, housing and homelessness, um, obviously Playford's median wage is well below the national average um, and we have many living below the poverty line. And I see this a lot, even just on my weekend ventures, because we care and, and we have a lot of charities that help people out. Um, as well as the funding opportunities, as I think obviously, and we all know this, we need to leverage as much federal and state funding as possible to achieve the outcomes, ideal outcomes for our residents. Um, so thank you very much. It was a really good opportunity and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Norris. I also attended the Australian uh, National General Assembly along with the Regional Development Forum and the Australian Council of Local Government. Regional Development Forum uh, was a quite an interesting day. Had more delegates than usual, close to 500, uh, that looked at natural disasters and resilience, um, shortages in development of skills and trade training, the future of regions and outer urban communities, interacting with those regions, connecting our communities with the regions and also investing in communities and hearing from the relevant government departments. The 
recommencement of the Australian Council of Local Government occurred on the Friday, which was an opportunity for mayors uh, and other delegates to have a number of panel discussions with the Prime Minister, Minister King, Minister Short, Minister McBain, Minister Watt, Minister Collins, and the opportunity to ask questions of them um, and debate some of the government policies in which they are looking to enact. Um, and obviously with a large number of delegates, there was obviously a number of questions. Uh, two relevant ministers, I had the opportunity to ask some questions to Minister King in relation to urban road uh, connection to national infrastructure. So it raised the issue of Curtis Road in one of the panel discussions uh, with Minister King. Councillor Norris and Councillor Smallwood-Smith have probably spoken a lot about some of the other items that were uh, already there, so I won't go through all of those, but uh, it was also good to be there for the motions and policy debate uh, from across the country uh, with considerable interest this year from a number of councils compared to previous years. Uh, and my report, which we'll table along with the others in due course. Are there any other reports of representatives on conferences or training programs? No, then we'll go to item eight, questions without notice. Are there any questions? Councillor Smallwood-Smith. Yes, thank you very much. Um, my question relates to uh, being provided, or the council being provided, with the number of homeless people in the city of Playford. And I don't mean those that couch surf, I mean the, the ones who are actually outside in the weather. And the reason for my question is at the um, Rotary Club of Lights changeover on Sunday afternoon, I heard their uh, outgoing president talk about a thing called a shelter tent. And uh, they had bought a number of them in Gawla to provide for people who uh, sleep rough. And these tents are $85 each, and they can actually zip themselves up inside of them, and they're out of the weather. Um, the reason that we want to know that is because uh, Councillor Halls, who is the outgoing president of the Elizabeth Club, and I have been talking about whether the Elizabeth Club could actually purchase some of these, but we would need to know some idea of just how many people in this area are actually sleeping rough. So if I, I gather someone is take that on notice, but if you could please. Mr Green. Uh, yes, thank you uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Councillor, I will take that on notice. Councillor, on your hands. Thank you, Mr Mayor. So, um, thank you, John. So, I'm posing this question to ensure our community members stay informed. Uh, so the question um, is there, up there, where is it now? Yeah, there it is. So the question is, could the engineering department please provide an update on the traffic issues concerning uh, the uh, Curtis Road and May North Road intersection, particularly regarding the right and left hand side exits towards May North Road? So if someone could please uh, reply on that. Mr Langman. Uh, through the chair, thank you for the question. Um, obviously, the intersection uh, that you're referring to is a Department of Infrastructure Transport intersection, so it's under their care and control. What we do know is it forms part of the Curtis Road um, upgrade kind of uh, agenda. Um, and one of the things that's informing that is a $250,000 study, um, which the department has committed to, which includes Curtis Road and some surrounding roads as well. Uh, that study is under review um, at the moment, and uh, the department are well engaged with council staff around determining what, um, A, what it needs to be investigated, uh, and once that study is complete, what upgrades will be, um, will be necessary and be able to be achieved for that intersection. There are a few um, bits and pieces mixed within that, so um, uh, sequencing at that intersection um, is not going to be changed at this point in time. That's the department is committed to not doing that until such time as the study um, has been complete. Thank you, Mr Lang. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor on Newsend. Thank you, Mr Langman. If there's no other questions without notice, I'm presuming that those that ask the question, someone wishes to move that their question is without notice and the accompanying responses be recorded in the minutes. Someone wish to move that way? Yes. Moved please. by Councillor Smallwood Smith, seconded by Councillor On His Hands. I'm presuming the mover and seconder don't wish to speak. No, there's no other discussion on that, then I'll put that. Those in favour? 
Those against, I declare that carried. We have a number of questions on notice that appear in the notice paper. Um, as our usual practice, they are all there. And they are taken as read. Move on to item 10, petitions, which are nil. Nil deputations. We move to item 12, motions without notice. Are there any motions? Councillor Marsh. Thanks, that uh, Mayor Doherty. I'll just um, wait for the motion without notice to be put up. Wait a moment while yep. we get that up. That. Um, I'd like to just um, move, move tonight that, uh, that the Mayor writes to the property owner of the Smithfield Plains Shopping Centre to raise the safety concerns shared by the community in regards to the condition of the shopping centre car park. And acknowledging that it's a, a private development um, based in, in Smithfield Plains, the, the Deputy Mayor and I have been working with the local um, community for, for a few months now. and. Equally, it's shared throughout those particular, um, if it's Davron Park, if it's Smithfield Plains, so who utilise those uh, shopping centre, um, is that there's considerable um, potholes, degrading of, of, the, of the bitumen, and obviously it looks like there's some sort of unwillingness um, by, by the owners of, of this shopping centre wanting to, to invest in, in safety upgrades. So I'm um, acknowledging we're quite limited to what we can do as a, as a council. Um, I think the, the, the best thing that we could do is actually send a clear message that our constituent council um, elected members have been out there in, engaging with the, the residents. And uh, a simple letter, I think, will set it quite straight that uh, the, they need to invest in, uh, in the safety upgrade. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Marsh, let's say item find a seconder. Councillor Rentoulis. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, shared the uh, concerns expressed by Councillor Marsh. Uh, this is the appropriate next step. Uh, Councillor Marsh and I have both written to the property manager that operates the uh, shopping centre there, and, and the property manager, for everyone's information, is actually quite amenable to um, us working with them. I believe that they are themselves frustrated that the owners uh, of the shopping centre uh, are just uh, not really doing anything at all. Um, the condition of the car park uh, by any objective fair standard is, is deplorable. It's not fair for um, the local residents uh, of that area and anyone else that uses that shopping centre to have to traverse on that, uh, that particular car park, um, it's an accident waiting to happen. I'm sure there have been quite a few accidents already um, just because of the shocking state. Uh, that's one among many issues. So hopefully uh, this adds impetus to the owner to do something. Thank you. Any other councillors wishing to speak? Councillor Van Peer. Thank you, Mayor Doherty. Um, yeah, I'm supportive of this motion, um, having the mayor write to the property owner. Um, I recently was out at the Smithfield Plain Shopping Centre um, with some residents and some council staff who um, have done a great job in uh, maintaining a relationship with the uh, business owner um, and asking them to, um, you know, do patchwork, like fix potholes. Um, we recently um, had a small win. We were able to um, get some of the uh, posts um, put in the ground. They'd been lying on the ground for quite some time and um, it was not only an eyesore but um, quite unsafe, if you ask me. Um, it has obviously been quite a long and frustrating process and I know that residents are really 
um, frustrated given you know, the work that's been done on Peachy Road, nearby parks, um, to really uplift the area. So, um, you know, the, the, the look of the complex, um, you know, is quite a contradiction to that work. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what could possibly come out of this, but um, I think it's definitely worth a try um, to sort of expand on the progress that has already been made by council staff. Any other council, Councillor Smallsmith? Yes, thank you. I'm very pleased that this has come to council because for some years I have been trying to get something done. I even um, put in a request to council about it and I was told because it was a, a private car park there was nothing council could do and that was a bit disappointing because it is a terrible disgrace and it's been like it for so many years and the owner is just getting away with it so I do hope that something comes of this. Any other councillors wishing to speak? If not, Councillor Marsh has the right to close if he wishes, which he does not. So I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Are there any other motions without notice? Councillor Rintoulis. Thank you, Mayor. Do we have the... I believe it's just coming up now, hopefully. So just very quickly, councillors, um, motion without notice that within two months staff facilitate a workshop regarding an, an upgrade of Odgers Road and O'Loughlin Road, Virginia, that considers the provision of footpaths, stormwater drainage, street lighting and widening in accordance with Australian standards, the impact of associated growth deeds on the timing and funding of works, <coughs> funding pathways and inclusion in a future annual business plan, potential developer contributions and any other relevant considerations. Council staff are also to meet with the developer at the end of Odgers Road, Virginia, to negotiate in relation to obtaining financial contributions from it to improve the overall condition of Odgers Road and O'Loughlin Roads in the next 12 months. Okay. Thanks. Speak to yep. Thanks, Mayor. <clears throat> so, councillors, just a, a bit of background, and um, I thank you um, for your indulgence in this matter. I, I understand that I have sent, I've disseminated some information uh, uh, earlier this evening. Apologise for the, the lateness in getting that information to you. Uh, last Wednesday evening, I um, walked. Uh, the streets of um, the, the back streets of Virginia, specifically Odgers Road and Lachlan Road, and we did a petition with several residents. Uh, the head petitioner, uh, Catherine Hunter, and her partner, Ross Cooper, um, assisted me with this particular petition. And uh, in a nutshell, the petition, um, which was signed by 27 residents, calls for a, um, a significant uplift in um, the standard of, of those two roads in line with those dot points um, that are in tonight's motion. A um, bit of history in relation to, to those roads. I have previously um, worked with residents to try and bring about um, improvements on those roads, but the, the common theme has been that um, it's a rural area and uh, it won't be yet be uh, considered in the annual business plan. Um, those roads just have to wait, they're not at the top of the priority table. The change now in terms of us um, trying to do something about this again is that at the end of Odgers Road, on the, the western side, as it as Odgers Road meets with uh, O'Loughlin Road, there's going to be an, uh, a development that's going to be approved by council staff in the next couple of months of 103 allotments, 103 residential allotments. So the the issue now becomes one of um, the the use 
of Odgers Road and O'Loughlin Road will be significantly greater. We're talking about uh, Odgers Road um, and O'Loughlin Road that some five years ago only had about three or four houses on them. And even though the road was poor, um, it was okay. It was satisfactory because there weren't too many uh, households uh, on those roads. In the last five years, there have been some minor developments that have significantly increased the patronage of residents on, on those roads, particularly uh, Odgers Roads. Odgers Road, sorry. But now this takes it to another level. We're talking about a development of 103 allotments. Uh, Odgers Road in particular, and I did, if, uh, if you look at the, the photos that I, I sent you earlier this evening, councillors, Odgers Road in particular is, is deplorable. Um, if you look at the, the photos that I've sent through, the road doesn't meet the Australian national standards. It's, it's you, as you can see from the photos, you, you can barely get two cars along that road side by side. Um, it's a major arterial road from the nearby Virginia Primary School and the, the main street of Virginia, Old Wayford Road. Um, the usage of that road is going to increase significantly, which poses a significant risk to children that walk along the road, along the, the side of the road and on the road, um, and to any residents. Um, so this, this petition, uh, sorry, this, this uh, motion, uh, which has had a petition also um, uh, put forward to the council, the petition will, will be presented at, at the next ordinary council meeting. This, this motion uh, seeks to um, bring um, awareness to this, this particular issue and, and to uh, help educate all of us in terms of a workshop in, in the next couple of months um, with the view to putting uh, these two stretches of road uh, in the annual business plan in, in years to come, particularly to coincide with uh, Sheedy Road. Sheedy Road at the moment is in, the, in this year's annual business plan. Um, there's a concept concept planning um, in the, the annual business plan um, uh, on the assumption that it's it's carried. So uh, these two roads need to to align with um, with Sheedy Road. Uh, and right at the end there, of, I'm also being a bit of an adventurous. I'm asking that our staff work with the developer to attempt to endeavour to negotiate um, some financial contribution contributions to be brought forward to improve the condition of Hodges Road and, and O'Loughlin Road in the next 12 months, particularly in light of the fact that that development is going to seriously cause significant stress on, on those two strips of road. And therefore, in my uh, humble opinion, I believe that the developer also needs to, to assist financially to a greater extent. Thank you. All right, Councillor Antoulis. Um, I call for a seconder, would you just be happy to, after the word workshop, insert the words with council, just to be clear on who the workshop is with? <laughs> yep, you happy with that? Um, and then Mr Green um, had a question or comment. Uh, to you, Mr Mayor and Councillor Antoulis, for, for your consideration. Um, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with the last paragraph uh, in the respect that I'm aware that council staff have had some negotiations and potentially have some level of commitment from the developer around some contributions. And I would prefer uh, if, if you're willing to, to include that as one of the points in the workshop so we could advise the council about what has been negotiated to, the, to date. Um, obviously, uh, if that doesn't meet with the satisfaction of council, um, once you have that information, we can talk about what we do with it from there. But uh, I think uh, my preference would be that we give the council um, the full information about what's already occurred um, before this resolution uh, is passed, because if it is passed in its current format, we will be bound to go and have conversations with a developer that we've already spoken to. Thank you, Mr Green. Look, I appreciate the uh, concerns that you've raised, but I, uh, I want to keep it as is. I've had um, conversations this evening 
with both Adam Squires and, and Matt Deneen and I, I thank them for their, their good advocacy. Um, and I thank them for meeting with uh, four residents tonight at short notice. Uh, what you've just uh, discussed with me was also discussed at the meeting and I still want to, to keep it as is. Thank you. There's a motion for a second there. Yeah, thanks, sir. Yeah, I'm happy to um to to, to support. I know this is uh, this is something that uh, if I use the word we or not or my, my views or whatever else, but it's the, the community's strong views that um, this is a whirlwind of, of a tornado of a, of a topic. Growth deeds, it's amazing, when, isn't it, when the state government rezones City of Playford and there's no legislation requirement um, to to assist with the financial burden to, to local government. What I do support about this is that we're we're trying to pick up something. Um, that maybe the next council won't have to wear the cost of if there is any poor planning. I, um, with due respect, I know council staff are probably their hands are quite tied in, in their negotiation with, with, with developers and I think we need to acknowledge that. Um, I think we've been probably leaders in, in this state with the skills from, from our staff to really negotiate social deeds, road deeds, um, infrastructure, stormwater deeds, um, knowing full well their optional optional contributions from developers outside of their, uh, their four roads that uh, their, their estate um, borders. I do probably want to give acknowledgement to, this is probably something that might be very worthy to put under the nose of uh, Minister uh, Nick Champion, where there's a new advisory independent board who's supposed to better coordinate um, growth throughout South Australia. And this is probably a prime example of the, the small pockets of growth that are hurting this council. Then overlay it with every other piece of um, puzzle if you want to as well. But I think this is a, a good one where if, if the mayor or the CEO meets uh, the, the minister or the, the new head of this uh, particular advisory board, that that we poke these under the nose of them and really see the issues that we have here in, in the city of Playford. I will back the, the Deputy Mayor in, in this push because I'm, I'm, I've been obviously pretty hypocritical of, of previous state governments or, or this particular one, but I want to give the chance of this, this state government, but also our staff, to be able to go back out there. Obviously, the, the message that the Deputy Mayor has been provided isn't appropriate. Um, I'm, I'm going to assume that, and it probably doesn't go so, so far. but. I think we need to we need to keep um, on on top of this. This kind of stuff, I think, does need to be the chamber. I do love it that we're bringing this to the public eye. It's not all about um, not saying they don't trust staff talking to developers, but I think every now and then we do need to bring this kind of stuff to the table in the public and um, the the state government of the day, regardless of who who they are, um, need to come on board. So. You know, we can rattle off a lot of roads um, anywhere within the city of Playford. It doesn't matter if you're Manapara Downs, West, Blake's Crossing, Blakeview, Craigmore, wherever there's new developments, we all have issues um, with, with this kind of stuff if it's stormwater. Unfortunately, the responsibility sits with local government for stormwater and, and that's obviously the big cost. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing that roads, um, if it's a state government, they, they put a couple of pennies towards that, but we're the ones who have to fork out tens of millions of dollars of, of stormwater infrastructure. So, um, yeah, thanks for bringing this, this forward. Thanks for the community to, to bring this forward. And I think it's just a, it's, it's a really good joint um, approach that, um, you know, Council is uh, experiencing growing, growing pains. We've heard it and we'll continue to hear it. We're not going to stop growing and we're not going to stop developing out in Virginia, Angleville, Manapara West, Andrews Farm, Air, and we will continue to experience this until something changes. So, um, in, in respect, hopefully this is something that um, when, you, when you liaise with those advisory chairpersons or um, chief executives, um, we can keep showing them um, the good work, at least what we're doing at staff, with a very little uh, levers that we can pull. Um, but yeah, please, uh, I think this is, this is very worthy. Hang on, Councillor Van Appeer. Thank you, Mayor Doherty. Um, firstly, uh, thank you to the Deputy Mayor for bringing this to the Council Chamber. And I also want to um, thank and acknowledge the residents who um, started the petition, signed the petition, um, and brought this matter to our attention. Um, absolutely, with a, you know, a, a development nearby, um, occurring and having you know no plans to upgrade these local roads um, is quite concerning um, and not only uh, this development that concerns me it's also um, the upgrade of the Virginia Main Street which I'm sure 
uh, residents are well aware of, that is um, well underway. Um, and when that concludes, I would assume that a lot of vehicle traffic will be um, redirected on these alternative routes to get into the shopping centre. So I think that will also have um, a large impact on the traffic that we see on those two roads. Um, Given the funding in the annual business plan for Sheedy Road, um, it would be good to start the conversation um, about Alger's Road and O'Loughlin Road um, to have more of a holistic um, approach. Uh, and yeah, it's very concerning, but you know, something you see across the city where you've got um, lots of uh, developments popping up here and there, but the connections between these developments don't exist and you're relying on some really small and narrow regional roads um, to connect all of these people. So um, yes, I do support the motion um, and I hope that we can make some progress. Any other councillors wishing to speak? If not, Councillor Rentoulis has the right to close if you Sorry, wish. Oh, Councillor Arif. Just quickly, um, uh, in relation to two months, uh, does that provide enough, uh, staff enough time frame to uh, undertake the workshop? Um, yeah. And look, I, I support the intent of the motion, but I think, as our CEO said, with, with relation to um, the last dot point, um, given that staff have already um, you know, had conversations with the developer. I think what we need to do is really do the workshop and fully understand uh, what at, at Fixie work council staff have undertaken and the response from the developer before uh, um, committing staff to um, meeting with the developer. Again, um, I'm not sure if that's uh, an efficient way of going about it. So for that reason, I'll probably want to support the, the motion. Any other councillors wishing to speak? If not, then Councillor Antoulis has the right to close. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, um, you councillors, in particular Councillors Marsh and Van der Peer, uh, for your support, and, and Councillor Riffey as, as well for your constructive criticism. Um, in relation to removing the last part of, of the motion, I don't see any good reason to do that um, for a number of reasons. Uh, firstly, we are here to do our best to advocate on behalf of the residents. Um, there is no compulsion on the developer to, to do anything. We are merely sitting down with them and negotiating in good faith. They can say no, they can say yes. At least we, we have tried, we're seen to be trying by the residents and, and that's what we should be doing. Uh, in relation to the uh, financial contributions with respect to the deeds. I'm very well familiar, I'm very well versed with the deeds. And I can tell you um, that there is no funding mechanism at the moment whatsoever whereby um, Odgers Road and, o and O'Loughlin Road um, will be upgraded as a result of the current deeds. I know this because um, I've spoken on many occasions to our staff. We had a meeting, as I said, today, and that was reiterated in the meeting. At the moment, there will be no funding that will be directed to Rogers Road and O'Loughlin and and Roads. The funding from the deeds will go to upgrading the intersection of uh, Sheedy Road, Penfield Road and Old Wayford Road with a, with a set of uh, traffic lights, and so it should, um, and also in relation to the upgrade of McAvoy Road um, and Old, Old Paul Wakeford Road. So um, our, our staff go to the developer in good faith to attempt to negotiate something in terms of financial contributions on roads that will benefit their development. They are going to make a good amount of money from 103 allotments and their development is going to significantly increase the strain on our roads. Thank you. All right, councillors, we had the motions before us. I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. The division's been called by Councillor Rentoulis, so the motion is set aside. So those voting for the motion, if they can rise in their place. And for the ease of the minute taker, it's all by Councillor Arifi. Thank you, councillors.
no other motions without notice then we go on to motions on notice we've got the first motion on page nine support for local food and wine councillor marsh thanks i'm mayor Dockey. um as part of the council support it uh it to its local food and wine industry it will strongly preference the provision of locally grown produced and sold products at its events and within its venues. I just want to, um, and, and I'm not saying that it's something that we, we're not doing as, as council, I think it's just something that yet again, um, as, as elected members, we support um, the, the groundwork that our staff are doing to the variety of industries um, throughout the, the city of Playford, you know, acknowledging the, the business network, to the Playford business network that's bouncing around to, to different um, venues, there's an array of other particular um, services being being provided but what I want to just um, hone in on is a industry that does exist within the the, the city the city of Playford and that's uh, a particular wine industry that, that sits here in, in Playford and although some could say that it's qu um, quite known I think it could be better well known right here of the hundred thousand residents here here in the city of Playford but more broadly all those uh, people that um, choose to go to the Brosser or the McLaren Vale to to enjoy a, a particular outing I want to give a shout out to, to those particular those in that industry. You've got Yulibri Wines, Tenerife Creek, 36 Short, Pure Vision Organic Wines, Vergara Wines, and Edinburgh Distillery. It's these types of small businesses that, that are actually quite amazing and actually put um, City of Playford on the map, not just state um, winning um, awards in the state nationally, but they're also winning um, awards globally. They're on the global stage, some of these, who are actually here based in, in the City of Playford. So like many, many industries, this is done to just, just to show that um, we, we continue to, to support our locally grown um, produce, we, um, also products that we can sell that are actually in at our events. There might be particular um, state um, exhibitions um, that we might put on here where delegates uh, are, are coming to and there might be an opportunity where we can um, showcase um, some of these pro particular produce. It could be if it is alcohol, if it's not, if it's foods um, and really showcase as simple as um, a couple of signs or they might serve those particular um, products to, to those delegates. So I'd like to see over time. I'm not asking for, for funding now but I think this, this motion just shows our, our staff when we continue to do these exhibitions um, and, and obviously invite people to to our council let's start focusing focusing first um, here here in the city of Playford and if it's not here then broaden out um, outside of our local government motion find a second council thank you mr. mayor happy to support the the motion for the reasons outlined by councillor Marsh of course it goes without saying that a council should be supporting its own uh, producers and proprietors um, if I just may ask a question of staff, um, do we currently have a, a, a policy or a preference for supporting local businesses in, in this sphere in terms of buying their food? Is that is that something that's at the in our consideration at the moment, or Mr. Green? Uh, through Mr Mayor, uh, Councillor, good question. Um, we certainly have a, um, when we consider tenders that we've put out, um, a consideration of whether the um, delivery is going to be by local people or local organisations. I probably don't have enough information to give you full, in, uh, full uh, answers with respect to the purchase of food and, and beverages, so in that respect I'd take that on notice and provide you with an answer after the meeting. Yeah, thank you, Mr Green. Um, I th yeah, I don't have to say anything else. I think the resolution is, is quite explanatory. It speaks for itself. Thank you. Any other councillors wishing to speak? If not, then I'll put the motion before us. Those in favour, those against, I declare that carried. We move to the next motion on notice, Ulibri Road, Ulibri, on page 10. Councillor Kerrison. Uh, thank you, Mayor Doherty. Um, tonight, my, my, my motion on notice, the City of Playford conducts a safety review of Ulibri Road, Ulibri, and brings a report back to Council. The report is to include safety and incident data, measures to improve safety, the consideration of a speed limit reduction. Um, we may be aware um, I'm not sure if everyone knows the uh, section of road 
that I'm probably referring to, but it's near the Uliberry Cemetery. Um, I've driven that many times over the years and it's always been a, a, a corner of concern and has, I believe there's been a num number of accidents. Recently there was a um, very tragic and sad accident where a young local lady lost her life and on the on the back of that at the Wantrill um, um, markets there's been some community feedback about the safety of that road. Um, I think it's only fair that we have a look at it, um, consider a review of the whole road, um, but predominantly focused around that sharp bend near the Uliberry Cemetery. Um, I'm not one that's in favour of a lot of speed limit reductions in general. Um, however, the community has voiced that as a possibility to improve safety. Um, and I'm really keen that uh, we do a report, consider the safety, and then consider what we do from that point. Thank you. So, councillors, just to be clear, it's Uli Road at Ulibri. In your notice paper, it says Ulibri Road, Ulibri, but it is Uli Road, Ulibri. So, find a seconder, councillor Rentoulis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Happy to uh, second the, the, the motion by councillor Kerrison. Of course, this is one of our core functions as a council to uh, look at um, improving our roads. That particular strip of road has seen a fatality, a recent fatality, um, and there is um, a community uh, concern and um, a desire for us to, to, to bring about uh, improving it. So that's what this motion seeks to do. Thank you. Any other councillors wish to speak? Councillor Smalljanet. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in particular, with Yuli Road, I do um, support with regards to uh, that, I guess, western side of Yuli Road. Just note that Yuli Road does go all the way to Main North Road. Uh, is I just may I ask the question with regards to, to <coughs> Councillor Kerrison is that he would like to go all the way to Main North Road or perhaps to possibly Chapman Drive, where it then becomes rural to the west. Councillor Kerr, uh, Kerrison can clarify his motion and do remind councillors that questions are through to the chair and not directly to the councillor. But Councillor Kerrison, I will let you clarify your motion. Look, I, I do specify the whole of Uli Road, but uh, my intention is to go predominantly from Chapman Drive upwards. That would be correct. Councillor Bayani. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I just want to ask Council Kerson if he wants to consider a time frame for the data, for accident data to be collected. Do you have any specific time frame for this data? Is it five years, 10 years, how many years, or what would be a more realistic time frame for those data to be collected? Thank you. Okay, once again, I'll remind councillors that uh, direct questioning of the councillor um, is not usual practice. Questions are addressed to the chair or the staff, but I will allow Councillor Kerrison, if he wishes, to clarify the motion. Look, um, thank you, Mayor Doherty. Um, this is something that I believe staff will attend to um, in due process and consider and with in reasonable time. I didn't see a need to uh, set a time limit at this point in time. Um, obviously, if uh, behind the scenes, I will, I will be following up, and if there's no uh, activity on it, we'll obviously I'll move a further motion. But I have, I have faith and trust in our administration at this stage to uh, progress this. Thank you. Are there any other councillors wishing to speak? If not, then I will put the motion. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. We then go to item 13.3, motion on notice Yorktown Road, Blacktop Road, intersection One Tree Hill. Councillor Kerrison. Thank you, Mayor Doherty. Um, that the staff prepare a report back to Council around Yorktown Road, Blacktop Road, intersection, covering the following information. A history of the recent, in the last five years, advocacy undertaken by Council uh, with the Department for Infrastructure and Transport surrounding safety improvements to the intersection. Uh, provision of the latest safety um, and accident data for the intersection. An outline of the response from DIT, including correspondence and physical works undertaken at or relating to the intersection. This outline should be also cover the, the last five years. Um, the reason I'm moving this motion tonight is I want us all to be 
understanding of the history of the intersection to date. Um, it is a notorious intersection. Um, I can remember as uh, a young man seeing and hearing someone I knew as a local resident um, significantly injured at that intersection. Um, my biggest concern over recent years is it's not the locals predominantly having problems, it's people from outside the area. Um, and there's been a very predominant pattern. It's when it's wet, foggy, in the winter months. All right, so it's people coming up through that area, they don't know the, the road tremendously well. They're shoot, overshooting the intersection, going straight through it and heading predominantly into the paddock. Now, on the surface of it, you know, that's sad. But sooner or later, there's going to be someone traversing that road and they're going to be taken out, as, ha as has happened before. Um, you know, look, thank you to Rhian and Pierce. She's been very supportive. Um, the department's had the minister out there as well. The minister's come out to site with Rhiannon, which is really good. Um, and there's been some things that are being implemented to try and improve it. But still, as we speak currently, there are still instances occurring at that intersection. Um, initially, I put a motion forward that I believe we should be lighting that intersection, because my experience with lighting intersections, it makes a drastic difference. Um, so I don't think the measures put in place today are sufficient. But I think what we need to understand as a chamber is um, what we've done to date, get a picture of it, and then work out what we need to do and adv advocate for improved safety for our community. Thank you. Councillor Antoine. Happy to support the motion. I don't need to speak. Thank you. Any other councillors wishing to speak? Councillor Small Jack. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, this uh, I, I fully concur with um, uh, Councillor Karras, and this um, this intersection is quite dangerous. Um, I just want to confirm, Mr. Mayor, through you uh, that the spelling of Yorktown Road to be removed of the E uh, and blacktop um, separate words and capital T. Um, and that is all. Thank you. As per Google. I'll make sure the minute taker will appropriately uh, correct that wording. Uh, and if it's not right, we will sort that out. But I think the intention is clear. We know what Blacktop Road and Yorkshire Road that we're talking about. But we'll double check that. Thank you, ma'am. Not that uh, we don't trust Google, but you never know. Are there any other councillors wishing to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour, those against, I declare that carried. We move on to committee reports and then we go down to Strategy and Services Committee review of delegations. And the recommendation, Mr. Mayor. Yes, and just before we do that, councillors, you will be aware that you would have received a memo that had yep. the updated delegation. I presume that's what you're moving, Councillor Baker. Yes. Um, then we've moved by Councillor Baker. Do you wish to speak? No, I just have a second, Councillor Onyzans. Thank you. I presume you don't wish to speak, Councillor Onyzans. No, I don't. No. Does any other councillor wish to speak? No. Then I'll put that. Those in favour. Those against, I declare that carried. Go on to item 14.2, Community Organisation Support Framework and Attachments, on page 677. So moved. Moved by Councillor Smallwood-Smith. Is it Fina Smekinder? Happy second. Second by Councillor Arifi. I'm presuming the mover and seconder don't wish to speak. Does anyone else wish to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Division's been called, uh, so the motion is set aside. Uh, all those voting for the motion, if they can rise in their place. That's everybody. Oh, Councillor Craig, still not back. That's everybody, thank you. Move to item 14.3, Norma Business Plan 23-24 and attachments. Moved by Councillor Marsh, find a seconder. Councillor Onyazan. You're happy to second that, Mayor. I'm presuming the mover and seconder aren't wishing to speak. Is any other councillor wish to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against, I declare that carried. Move to item 14.4, provision of century chill out zones at council events. Councillor Vanderpeer. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor Doherty. I'm happy to move that. Uh, Can we just, just Yeah, just a couple of words. Um, yeah, thank you firstly to council staff for putting their report together. Um, Councillor Carlson has um, done a lot of advocacy work in this space um, and I think it was great that um, they consulted with, um, you know, a, a, a therapy provider who is also um, involved in local government and is familiar with the events that councils hold. Um, so I look forward to um, seeing these uh, chill out zones be implemented in the future. Thank you, Councillor Adipier. Councillor Carlson. Oh, second. Your second, do you wish to speak? Yes. So I, I just want to say, again, like Councillor Van I just want to say a big thank you to everyone um, involved in putting this report together. Um, I've spoken to a few of the staff that assisted in putting it together and their passion and dedication was admirable. Um, as a parent that's been through her fair share of providers, I was sceptical about who was going to assist in providing advice, but to hear Tammy Lee Spencer from Sunny Spectrum Support was involved was a nice surprise. <laughs> Um, I have huge respect for Tammy and what she does in this space and it was fantastic to talk to her at the Positive Futures Expo. And after hearing about my motion, she's worked to implement something very similar in the city of Tea Tree Gully, which made me quite proud. Um, the role on effect to have an inclusive community in all areas and events is something we as elected members should strive for. Um, for far too long, the special needs community have not been included in these discussions and it's great to see this is changing. Um, I'm excited to see the sensory space rolled out in our council events and hope that we can promote it um, and encourage more families along that may have otherwise stayed away from these types of events. Um, and I'm also proud that only after a matter of months on council I can say I've made some meaningful change and look forward to bringing some more new ideas to council. Once again, thank you to the staff involved, the inclusive team in council that have taken time out of their day to talk to me and listen to me excitedly talk about what I envision for our city and its future in this space is appreciated. Um, and our shared passion makes me excited to see what we can achieve. Thank you. Councillor Carlson, anyone else wish to speak? If not, there's no other speakers, then I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Move to item 14.5, adoption of the 23-24 annual business plan and budget. Councillor Baker. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Mr Mayor, I'd like to move the recommendation before us and um, preface that by saying that although given under different circumstances that no one wants to put pressures on increased financial on our residents but uh, this document gives us the transparent spread of services and capital works throughout our city responding to the critical and infrastructure needs of our city and if we look at the demographics we have something like 48,000 assessments only 305 of which are either on hardship or chosen build smoothing programs and we have 24 postponements of people who, um, who have decided that they, uh, they will only pay the $500. People on any form of benefits will receive relief from the government in terms of cost of living payments and, uh, and I'm reliably informed that two thirds of the residents in uh, South Australia will benefit by $500 from government subsidies. We have 20% commercial rates and we have 1,153 com community houses. We have a fixed charge rate of $1,042.95 and the balance of course is calculated on the capital value issued by the, uh, the value general, I need to say governor general. <coughs> We've seen over the past weeks, local government throughout the state has landed on a percentage rate almost the same as the one we are contemplating. And I think everyone in the chamber would agree that we've learnt some salutary lessons about the lack of control we have over our budget, uh, particularly with things like the Angle Vale Bridge and the very large issue that we discussed last Tuesday evening. And as a couple of our councillors have said recently on the ABC, that unless we get our infrastructure programs underway, we're unable to provide the services to our residents and our annual business plan is doing that very thing. At the meeting last month, our sports strategy uh, meeting was attended by all our councillors and there were no dissenting voice indicating that we're on the right track and we need to increase the service of the capital works and the maintenance programs. And out of those results, the five most necessary programs were identified and agreed to by council. The important thing is, having a surplus, albeit very small, 
will give us the capacity to meet unexpected expenditure, such as the Angle Vale Bridge, and cost shifting from both state and federal governments. Probably more important, if we think about it, is a vote to reduce the surplus outside of our nominated and voted sustainability ratios is a vote against future sustainability. And I think it's important to be able to recognise what we don't know and plan to the best of our ability to put those contingency efforts to place to cope with what we don't know. It's also vitally important to provide the very services in this annual business plan for our very vulnerable residents who need it the most. So I commend the budget to you. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor Baker. Before I call a seconder, you would realise, councillors, that we do have the attached for the budget, which has the, un, unlike the notice paper, we have to get the most relevant adoption of values. They are now on the screen. That's also for the members of the gallery. You will notice in your packs, uh, members of the gallery, the yellow was left blank. We have to leave that to the most virtually critical time to adopt. So Councillor Baker has removed the amended, um, well not amended, but the updated version that is on the table. So we're all clear. Councillor Halls. Thank you, Your Worship. You seconding Councillor Halls? I am, yeah. and um, Councillor Baker stole some of my <laughs> stories. <laughs> But what I'd like to do is I would like to thank the residents and foremost for uh, their input into um, our, our plans for um, the next 12 months. I think that we've all been contacted and it's been a great time to um, work out how we can best manage the money that we want to raise um, to uh, do what they want us to do. And I think that this plan is going to get our residents what they want um, over the next 12 months. And I'd like to thank the elected members and staff as well for their hard work in putting it together and coming to an agreement. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Halls. Any other councillor wishing to speak? Councillor Marsh. Yeah, thanks, Mayor Doherty. I'd like to um, just echo the, uh, the, the comments made by the two previous um, elected members. And, uh, and that's that I'll support this particular rate rise for, for the city, city of Playford. We're, we're a growing um, city going from, what, 105,000 to upwards of 140,000 um, people here in, in the city of Playford. We've all been very clear in the last 12 months of we wanted to expedite uh, a few of our expenditures for some infrastructure and, and services, um, but we, we buzzed those through to, to our annual business plan um, to tonight. It's, it's good to see that growth is uh, continuously contributing um, to delivering not just uh, services and space to, to those, but also to the, the variety of areas within the, within the city of Playford. We've obviously got um, some $60 million of capital works to, to deliver, and I think what's bo um, positive is that every year, and from memory, we continue to deliver 16 to $20 million of asset renewal, stuff that we don't have to debate, and assets that continue to get renewed year in, year out in those older, older years. Of which, obviously, we've got $30 million to still uh, deliver on from, from last year, and that's obviously going to be a challenge to, to this council by right. And on top of that, we've decided we wanted to pump another $10 million of new services and capital works on top of this budget. So we've got about $60 million um, approximately to deliver over the next 12 months. And it's obviously not going to be without the challenges. And I continue to hope that staff can improve service um, delivery. Of such uh, continuation from, from previous um, years we've got detailed design for the Andrews Road upgrade. We've got a Garner Park car parking and oval lighting. It was very clear last term that we needed to take action on a Garner Park and continue to deliver that. We've got a Garner Park shared change room facilities. We've got Curtis Road, Frisbee Road intersection upgrade. We obviously got the Blakes Crossing um, local traffic management that's in partnership with the state government. We've got Dwight Reserve North upgrade. We've got Heaslip Road stormwater upgrade um, detailed design. We've got Kalara Reserve contribution by the state government. We've got McGilp, we've got Mufflin Reserve Upgrade, we've got Manapara West, Peerless Road, we've got Park Road Drain Sis, we've got Playford Alive, we've got Stormwater Minor Works on Andrews Road and the 
they continue to, uh, to, to go on. What's great to see, though, is that many of these capital projects from previous years are dipping into the open space funds that we've got to be very cautious about, that we don't drain too quickly. From, from there, we continue on to new projects and new services. What have we been asking for? And that's when I say we, that's the community through to us. We've asked for Broster Road shared use path connection detail design. We've asked for more footpaths throughout the city of Playford. We've asked for irrigation projects at a number of our parks throughout the city of Playford. We've got the Mark Oliphant kiss and drop um, from, from the, the state government. We've got road safety lighting upgrades. We continue to apply for the Stebeneath Road and Dow Keith Road intersection upgrade through Black Spot. We are then asking for, we want our open space minor projects, detailed design contributions, and that's through obviously Anglevale um, Community Centre, Blake's Crossing, Augusta Square in Smithfield. We, we've got playgrounds being upgraded. We've got minor traffic um, projects, of which one of them is the actuated crossing adjacent to the Playford College, something that they've been very vocal about and a number of elected members have been very vocal about over the last 12 months, of which we took to the annual business plan through the appropriate system and I hope would be supported tonight. We've got infrastructure deeds being delivered throughout the growth areas. The old Port Wakefield Road and Penfield Road intersection, a much needed one in, in Virginia. We've got um, McAvoy. Road basin um, being being delivered. We've got the angle of our, we've got the green fogo bin, something that this Playford Council probably trails behind a lot of other local governments in South Australia. Finally, giving our community an opt-in free service to be able to divert their fogo bins away from their red bins into their green bins, because we know that we have a yearly big dump that will close by 2026, and we need to take action. We're the last one out of three constituent councils that own Norma. The other two have delivered it in part of Norma, and we're trailing behind. So if you don't vote for this, yet again, we're going to go another year where our residents can't put and can't use FOGO. We've got greening the city of Playford. We implemented a 25-year strategy last term and we committed to this community that we'll continue to green our city. We knew that we were declining and we were replacing out of every 10, one or two trees. We set a target ambitiously that we would go beyond what the state government's recommendation was, and that was 15%. We took it up to 20% over 25 years. If we approve this additional urban tree planting, that's another 2,000 trees that will be, continue to be planted year after year. I think our community has been very clear, and you've only got to drive down our urban streets, doesn't matter if you're in the old area or the new, and they do not look pretty. We do need to continue to sustain our trees and keep planting many, many more. So I will support this annual business plan. This previous council's done too, too, too much hard work with the administration's um, efforts, Sam, and the staff below you, to not to return our budget back into the red, something that this council was experiencing for over 10 years. It increased our debt levels, that puts interest rate payments up, which puts more burden on the city of Playford. We returned ourselves back to structural surplus, used that structural surplus during COVID to lessen the rate rise. We're currently relying still on grant funding to, to operate. Why would we continue to do so when we can return ourselves to structural surplus? So when our sports strategy comes out and every single of us 15 are going to be knocking on the door to Sam Green asking that we want money invested into our sporting centres and they are the most important and they're more important than any other one. So if we don't vote for tonight, we're not going to have funding surplus to be able to lower the impact to the City of Playford and the annual business plan and we won't have funding available for our sports strategy when it gets delivered to us maybe by the end of the year. So for all those who have been asking for additional services additional infrastructure, we need to make it clear. We need to sustain the finances of this council and they continue need to be in structural surplus. You'll find the benefit in 12 months time when we return back here and we see that hopefully we have a lesser rate rise because what? We've used structural surplus. Thank you. Any other councillors wishing to speak? Councillor Baig has the right to close if she wishes. Oh, Councillor Reefing. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, uh, I do want to acknowledge uh, the work of our staff in preparing the uh, annual business plan, um, and I thank them for their efforts. Um, I think, uh, in my opinion, the annual business plan is one of the most important decisions elected members make um, in the chamber. Um, and ultimately, we are here to um, uh, ensure our council is thriving and uh, for us to provide um, best services to our residents and ratepayers. 
um, and I think it's important to justify your position in relation to this item. Um, and I think it's important to have a genuine debate and share your, your opinion and, and the feedback that you receive from the community. Um, this budget, uh, uh, we have a number of fantastic new initiatives, um, such as the uh, free opt-in green bean service, um, uh, the increase, um, increasing our tree canopy, uh, minor traffic management projects, and a number of others. Um, and, and I think um, my advocacy uh, alongside uh, a number of uh, new elected members uh, reflects our support for the uh, a number of uh, initiatives, including the uh, crossing for Playford College. Uh, most importantly, I think this school community is well aware of uh, uh, this ad ad advocacy work, um, hence uh, it has made it into the budget. Um, uh, in relation to um, the infl inflationary pressure, uh, we acknowledge that Council is facing uh, some uh, difficult times ahead, uh, as well as our residents uh, with uh, increasing in cost. Uh, it's a challenging time, uh, uh, I think it could probably be similar to COVID, which um, we were facing deflation, which now is um, now we're on on the opposite spectrum. Um, through my regular community uh, street corner meetings uh, with the local member, um, I've had many residents uh, turn out, and I thank them for their uh, uh, feedback and and uh, uh, attendance to my street corner meetings. Um, uh, many majority, in fact, are opposed to the significant rate increase. We understand that this is a, a um, uh, 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 an approach that every council uh, is currently undertaking. Uh, I also want to acknowledge there are councils who are proposing a rate increase of around 5%. Um, uh, and also, it doesn't help um, that the Reserve Bank, uh, uh, you know, I think most people here would disagree with the Reserve Bank's decision to increase the cash rate after their initial advice uh, that um, the, uh, there won't be any rate uh, rises until 2024. Uh, here we are, 11 uh, uh, um, rate increases. Uh, uh, and I think um, that has uh, damaged the business and, and consumer confidence in our community. Um, we see the cost of uh, living relief measures from both the, the state and the federal government, um, but to my residents, um, the 7.91% rate increase doesn't pass the PUP test. Um, and uh, uh, looking at the budget, uh, there are a number of initiatives which also concern me, and I, and I have asked staff a number of questions um, in relation to 1.1 million for growth management. Uh, I think it's a significant amount. Uh, uh, I understand we have to provide additional resources to manage our growth, um, but uh, we, we, we should uh, be managing that through new rates that are coming in uh, and not look at putting additional pressure on, on rate increases. Um, I also believe that uh, Council should look at observing the additional cost of $600,000 with electricity and fuel prices not just look at the rate increase as an only option uh, to, to cover our expenses. Um, I have uh, moved a lot of uh, number of motions and asked for a number of uh, uh, you know, important community services in my ward. Uh, uh, Ghana Park is an important one, uh, uh, which I have been able to advocate uh, for external funding through state government. Uh, th these are initiatives which uh, I have ensured that the council uh, has minimum, uh, uh, you know, impact on the on our cost, and I've been able to advocate for uh, funding through state government. We have been able to secure full cost for the shared changing facilities and Agana Park, the cricket nets. Uh, uh, we have been able to secure some funding from Cricket Australia, as well as uh, California Reserve for the new public toilets that will be going ahead. Uh, as well as Dwight Reserve um, upgrade. Uh, these, uh, these are the initiatives that I've been advocating uh, alongside uh, the Mark Oliphant College kiss and drop off uh, from the local member, 2.5 million. Uh, this is at the time when I was working for that local member. Uh, uh, I was uh, advocating strongly on 
on behalf of that project. Uh, so these are, these are the initiatives that uh, I've been able to strongly advocate through, through my contacts in the state government. And I think it's important that we reduce our cost and look at external funding. Um, so uh, th these are very important things that we can do as elected members. And, and for, for the, those reasons I outline, I won't be supporting the rate rise. Thank you. Councillor Bayani. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In my opinion, the rate rise is significant amount under the current economic situation. Increasing council rates would place further strain on our residents and families, potentially forcing them to forego other necessities to pay for the increased rate. Many people in my ward who are on fixed income, such as pensioner and those receiving welfare, most are rate payers. Increasing council rate would disproportionately affect our residents as they have limited financial flexibility to absorb this additional cost, especially now that everything is going up. Electricity, gas, internet bills are going up all in some percentage, and council rates adding to that list. People are doing it tough. Council, council was able to minimize the rate increase during COVID, and now we are seeing one of the highest rate increase in the history of this council. And I won't be supporting the proposed rate rise. Thank you. Councillor Bannon, can you see your button? Thank you. Councillor Kerrison. Thank you, Mayor Doherty. Uh, look, I think at uh, the end of the day, I don't like seeing this rate rise, 7.91%. 7, 7 um, however, I came to this table in 2018. I came here to uh, consider financial management and keep downwards pressure on rates. So that is my platform. That is what I am about. Um, I think we've got to look at the CPI, all right, and given that we're 7.9 per cent, all right, we're in catch up mode, all right, that's what it's been, all right. So I still think we're playing catch up, all right. Then we get the latest in the last month, got my power bill. There's another, depending what rate you're on, whether it's off peak or peak, etc. Um, between 20 and 30 per cent, all my charges were going up. All right, so that hurts us and it hurts us all. I agree. But you know what? When I go to the shop and do my shopping, whether I go to Woolies or Coles, what do you think is going to happen? Anything that they're going to run their freezers, they're going to run their lights. Do you think they're going to absorb that, that increase or do you think they're going to pass it on to us? All right, we as council, we operate on behalf of the community. End of the day, we, what do we do with our price increases? All right, so what I'm saying is right now, I'd like to see it lower. I'm not sure that 7.91% is enough. All right, if things keep going, we've just got power increases. What else is going to increase? What supply costs? So I'm a bit concerned. I think we've got a skinny budget in a lot of ways. We're not delivering lots, but in all, every time I talk to our community, at the markets on the weekend, they want better streetscapes. They want improved services. People want a lot of things, but we can't deliver it without having a sound financial budget. And as I said, this budget to me is a skinny budget. And if we're going to go for a lower rate, what are we going to cut out? Um, the other option we've got is to debt fund it. I think throughout history, all right, we've seen times where the City of Playford has debt funded some of our rates, all right, kept them artificially low. That's good. But is it the right decision? Is that financially responsible? Um, then I just go back to, you know, over the, this is the most important session to deliver a financial business plan. We go through a lot. We have many discussions, all right, to get here, all right? Do we just all of a sudden unravel it all, all right? We've all had opportunities to share our opinions, talk about things across the journey, all right? But yet, look, I expect Councillor Arifi, all right? But I think it was only last month at the Strategic Services Committee, there was a motion to include Dwight Reserve and extra funding, all right? Now, that was for toilets. 
We didn't even have costs on the toilets. But let's put it in the budget. Let's be financially responsible. We don't know what we're putting. We don't know how we're going to fund it. But let's put it in the budget. All right, so I just find it very interesting now that all of a sudden we don't support it. So my question is, if we don't support 7.91%, what are we taking out of the budget? All right, we've been through a process. I don't like it, but it's responsible. Um, you know, we haven't set inflation to where it is today. All right, we've got to deal with what we've been dealt with. Every household's got to deal with what it's been dealt with. And as hard as it is, we have to be responsible to our whole community at the same time. Thank you. Councillor Carlson. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I don't want to talk too long this, but I think residents, and especially Ward 2, deserve an explanation. Um, I've certainly battled with this decision. Um, I've been out in the community listening to what people are saying, um, but what I've come to the conclusion is that, yes, residents want to see their city flourish. They want to see new footpaths, they see their footpaths fixed, and they want to have their rubbish picked up. Um, and they want to see new projects, but they're struggling and they're hurting with rising costs. I understand that we tours of council have to wear these increased costs, but one thing I don't think the residents need to wear is such a big increase. Our residents don't need to wear the cost of a surplus, a buffer or a cushion, whatever you want to call it. The charities in our area have seen a huge increase to people needing their services to put food on the table. These are homeowners and ratepayers, families who are not putting on the heater in cold weather, families who are choosing whether to pay for medications or buy meat for the week. These are your everyday residents that are just trying to do their best. I just don't think it's the right time to burden residents with another blow to their budgets when in fact we could raise council rates but not to such a high percentage. Do I think rates need to increase to deliver some fantastic projects? Yes, but we can still deliver some great projects and it not be such a high rate. So as, a business, as the annual business plan stands, I have to say no, I won't be supporting it and it's for the residents out there doing it tough um, that I say no and I don't accept such a huge rate um, rise. Councillor Norris. Thank you. Um, look, I think, um, as Councillor Carson said, it's important for us to obviously stand up and speak on behalf of our residents. Um, I too have battled very much with this year's business plan, probably more so than any others that I've been involved in before. Um, obviously, I understand and I've had many conversations with councillors in this room about the strategic direction of council. I understand that obviously we incur these costs as well. They're happening to absolutely everyone across the board. Um, we need to ensure that we're financially su uh, sustainable and that we can continue to provide services and obviously offer renewal and fix things as they come up as well. Um, I also understand that within the budget there's obviously benefits to the residents of Ward 5, things such as Eastern Park, Dwight Reserve, Agana Park, um, road upgrades and obviously a lot of projects that we've put forward over a number of years that are still coming to fruition. Um, in saying that though, I wasn't elected by administration, I was elected by my constituents. I have noted obviously a lot of things that they've been saying to me recently things that have obviously been put up online as well. Um, and obviously to agree with uh, Councillor Carlson in this instance, they are hurting. You know, I mean, and, and what comes to mind for me, I guess, as a question for myself is, what good are all of these projects if you can't essentially afford to survive? You know, these, these guys are hurting. We have one of the lowest socioeconomic areas in, well, in the country. You know, we are below, the, a lot of people are below the poverty line. I mean, there's even people that are on good wages that are trying to find ways to save money, to stop their bills from literally increasing to the point that even they struggle. Um, I think that, and I understand that we are unique compared to other councils, but seeing our neighbouring councils obviously do lower rate rises than us, it just makes me question whether we've done the right thing. Um, I obviously have wavered because I sat in the strategic meeting and I voted for this, but I can't support 7.9. I think we're too high. So, sorry, guys. Councillor Van der Peer. Thank you, Mayor Doherty. Um, this is a decision that I don't take lightly. Um, and, you know, it's, it's hard coming onto council and going straight into the budget process um, and being, you know, Face with a 7.9% rate rise. Um, I do thank the council administration for preparing this budget. Um, I know a lot of time went into it and a lot of thought went into it. Um, 
and um, I also thank the CEO for being available to answer questions um, during the information sessions. I really want to thank every single person that has provided their feedback during the consultation process. Um, I, I did spend a lot of time reading through um, the feedback that was given um, and there were some really well thought out questions um, that you know got me thinking as well. Um, I also appreciate every resident who has called or emailed me um, to let me know how this rate rise, uh, proposed rate rise would um, impact them. Um, and look, I, I can sympathise with the argument that um, we need more money in the bank for a rainy day. I just don't think that the average Playford household has that luxury. It would be great if we did, but in this current economy, I just don't think it's an option we should even be discussing. And, you know, regarding the annual business plan planning process, um, I did voice my concerns during those information sessions and I also put forward some projects that my community would have liked to have seen, um, but these were not taken on board. Regarding the rate rise, I know there must be one, um, I just don't think it needs to be this much. Um, especially, especially when some of the rationale tonight has been um, for a rainy day fund. Um, we hear that the day-to-day -day costs for the council have increased, and I'm not denying that at all, um, but who exactly should be bearing the brunt for this? I, I just don't think that it should be our ratepayers. So in these economic circumstances, I don't think we should be asking whether residents should be paying more. I think we should be asking whether they can be paying more. Question. Question. Marsh, yes. Um, question. Um, to the CEO, can you let us know what's the percentage of uh, income? How's that, that made up? What I'm asking is the ratio of uh, state government, federal, and ratepayers. I'd be very interested in, in educating um, the, the council how we receive our income. And then I've got a second question. To you, Mr. Mayor, Council Marsh, can I clarify? Are you talking about the distribution of, of effectively the taxes that we pay? Yeah, the income that comes in, so from the rate, the residents um, versus. What Council Marshall is ascertaining is how much of our hundred and million dollars is re rate revenue compared to federal assistance grant, compared to fees and charge, compared to state government. Income. Okay. Oh, so about seventy-five percent is derived from rate pays. Seventy-five. With our revenue. Yep. No worries. Thanks. Thanks. That. So it's clear who who pays the majority and what we leverage. The the second one is when we inherit an asset, so if that's uh, state government has um, built the asset, they've contributed to an asset or an upgrade, who bears the operational ongoing costs um, to maintain and depreciate? So probably what I want to say is it's great that we have a contribution up front, but obviously there's some sort of uh, expense going forward. Who, who wears that every time that we get something new? Uh, the council, if we if we take ownership of the asset, has the ongoing uh, liability associated with maintenance and depreciation. Councillor Smallsmith. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. I'm not in favour of 7.9%. As everyone except the new ones in this chamber will know, that for 30 odd years I've never voted for a rate rise. However, I am a realist, and I understand that for this. Um, Council to go forward and to do all the things. Uh, I might just mention the um, school crossing up the road, which I didn't support, Councillor Arifi, and other things too that people want. They're all wanting them, but they don't want to pay the rate rise. I know people are hurting. I'm hurting in my own life. My grocery bill's gone from $200 a month to nearly 300 So I'm hurting. Everybody is hurting. But Again, what can we do? Our rents are going up, our electricity, and it's the same with the council. We've got more and more money to find to pay for things. And where's it going to come from? We can't keep going year after year, keeping at the same rate level because we'll get nowhere. Nothing will get done. And I'm sorry, but I'm voting for it this time because I am a realist and I'm not putting my head in the sand. Councillor Craig. 
Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I think echoing that comment, really, there's the reality of the inflationary pressures that we're all under, the, the state is under, everybody's under. If it's not 7.91, what's the alternative? What, uh, if it's not 7.91, what services do we cut? Because that's the reality. We'll have to go right back to the drawing board and rehash everything. Um, if we don't keep up with the real cost of operating, then we're passing it on, that burden, we're passing that burden on to the next generation, to future generations. If we don't um, make these tough decisions now, it's going to be harder next time we're sitting around this table uh, with the same question, well, how do we set the next um, rates? Because it, it's cumulative. It's, it, it puts the burden on the next, the next time we have to look at it. Uh, so which makes it even tougher to make those decisions. If we make some tough decision now to take the um, proposed rate, it will help us to be able to get things such that we won't have such pain in the future. So uh, as much as it's difficult, I think it's the right decision. Councillor Stroud. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you, everyone, for your uh, words tonight. Hey, I'd just like to say, yes, we are all struggling, and I get that. Look, I've got a newborn coming into my family in two months' time, and look, I'm struggling. I have a mortgage to pay for, I have electricity to pay for, I have water to pay for, and I now have council rates to pay for. Um, not only this, yes, we all are struggling, I get that, but we can't let this council run into the ground. We can't let the residents see that nothing's getting done by not voting for a rate rise. So yes, I am supportive of a 7.9 rate rise because yes, we all need to see what this council can achieve, even in this economic disaster, what's happening. So yeah, I will be supporting it. Councillor Spilgate. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you to the staff for uh, putting together the annual business plan and I, I, I thank um, everyone's input for the annual business plan as well. Um, I'm tracking uh, from, from our conversation, it's approximately about $2.60 a week rate rise to uh, on average per family. Um, it may not seem much right now but over that entire year it does add up and I completely understand that. I've had multiple resident, residents ring, uh, ring or email or just talking in person to say, hey, look, are you really going to support the 7.91%? And I am, I'm finding it, I'm torn because I'm on the fence. It's like I understand emotionally that it is tough times for everybody. And then on the other side, looking at the bigger picture um, where this could lead the city of Playford. So uh, my understanding, uh, for those who aren't aware, I am newly elected as of uh, sort of November 2022. Um, so this is the first time that I've come into a, a council meeting um, and having to make a decision on the annual business plan. Um, I'm tracking that uh, pre the previous council um, rates were kept quite low. And you know, thank you to the previous council. Um, and noting that they have, um, due to COVID and all those situations, I feel as though because those rates were uh, lower during the COVID times, it has, uh, I guess, led us into this situation now where we have had to increase our rates to be able to maintain the services and add the services that our residents uh, require and need in our, in our community. In the annual business plan, I have the confidence that the staff have done their due diligence with the services and the finances and the statements that they have given, given us. Previously, uh, prior to election, I've had multiple um, uh, residents reach out to me and uh, discuss you know, a 0% rate rise or at least a very minimal uh, rate rise. Uh, in those situations, you can't promise to say because I was unaware of the, the time and the amount of planning that goes into create a plan like this. Uh, however, I did say, hey, look, I'll do my best to keep rates as low as possible. Uh, again, since being newly uh, elected, I have a greater appreciation of the services that the council do provide uh, to our community and understand why an increase in rates is required. The cost of living has affected everyone, and this also includes our council. As councillors, we are here for the residents, uh, and we provide that strategic decision and see the bigger picture um, for, our, for our local area. 
We are to make informed decisions to the best of our knowledge and ask questions. Uh, we have those resources available to us and at times we need to make these difficult decisions. Again, looking at the bigger picture, I see where Playford would be with these extra resources at hand and I anticipate that the services and the, commu uh, and the community wants and needs will be met sooner if agreed to the 7.91%. I'm confident that the residents will see positive change by our council in the future if this annual business plan is adopted. Councillor New Zealand. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor. Thank you, uh, fellow um, councillors. Um, obviously, there is a differing opinions here tonight, and it's quite interesting because during our strategic and services committee meeting, we had, uh, you know, that uh, sort of majority of us supporting 7.9. So that's quite interesting for me to watch and listen to to a few. Um, However, uh, tonight uh, I would like to say that I am supporting the uh, council uh, resolution up, uh, in front of us. Um, I have heavily considered the information and uh, I believe everyone does. Uh, and I also respect that, uh, yes, we are um, feeling the brunt of the rising cost and in other things uh, that's going on at the moment, but um, there was um, many uh, information sessions that we've done. We had the chance, we have the time to discuss, we have the time to reason out why and why not. And um, it, the, the administration has been very diligent and I'm quite impressed of how they presented this to us in a very simple manner and quite understandable way that no one will get lost along the way. Um, so, um, with that, having said that, um, what I have here as a um, member of, of the councillors that's representing uh, Ward 2, um, I'm here to um, support, support this um, 7.9 rate because, and that does not mean I do not care about what's going on. I actually do care about our moms, our dads, or single parents, or pensioners um, and single earners, and the rest of our ratepayers. The, the decision I'm making today is not about uh, popularity. Uh, this is not about popularity contest with regards to community members, um, but a contest to ensure our city's future and overall long-term financial viability is considered wisely. And that's what we're doing tonight for moms and dads and single parents and all the rest of our city's ratepayers. So that's the reason why I'm supporting um, staff recommendation. And we've heard along the way how, um, why we should support, uh, I mean, th so much discussion. Uh, Councillor Mars was quite passionate tonight, and so, so thank you for that. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, I'm supporting this uh, recommendation. Councillor Antoulis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just before I go on to uh, speak in relation to my position on the, on the annual business plan, uh, I've just got a, a question from Mr. Green. Um, Mr. Green, it's a rhetorical question. Um, at this late stage, um, given that there are a number of councillors that aren't happy with the proposed rate of 7.91%, um, is it appropriate at this late juncture to remove some services from the budget, perhaps to get to a rate that they're comfortable with? It's a rhetorical question, and I, and I ask that question rhetorically because I haven't at any stage during this process seen any of the councillors who are now expressing concerns propose an alternative, propose an alternative to the 7.91%. Um, as Councillor Kerrison has correctly explained, uh, we, we had some councillors that only a month ago decided they would want to propose additional uh, funding to a, a project out in their ward, which puts strain on the budget, which puts strain in relation to the overall rate rise. And it wasn't costed whatsoever, no costing. And now they have the audacity to come here and say that they're being uh, financially responsible, uh, empathetic to their residents. So respectfully, that just ranks major hypocrisy so I'm frustrated that 
these questions weren't addressed six months ago, three months ago, last week. We've got a number of new services that this community has been calling out for now for quite some time. Some of them many years in, in the, the waiting. So I say to those councillors that are going to vote against the budget, a vote against the budget is a vote against services. Services that you have specifically advocated for. Again, the hypocrisy, the politics. Councillors, we, there has been an argument made tonight that um, this a decision not to vote for the, the budget um, is one of empathy, helping our constituents who are struggling. And no one's saying that they're not struggling. I'm not standing here to, to come to here, to come to this chamber and say that our residents, some of them, uh, are not struggling. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that there is a reality to the situation. The CPI index were Adelaide the last quarter, only several months ago. Do you want to guess how much it was? 7.9%. Exact, exactly dead on in terms of what we, we're advocating for tonight. So we're not even going above inflation. I certainly remember a few councillors and even a mayoral candidate, not you, Mr Mayor, that uh, said that he would only support raise, uh, rate rises that were in conformity with inflation. Well, that's what this is, in conformity with inflation. We're not going above the, the rate rise, but we're not going above it. Um, what I have noticed in my time on, on, on council is, especially in the first four years, this council, unfortunately, was deficit funding, was going into deficit, and it had been doing so for about 16 or 17 years. Now, over the last two to three years, we've turned over a new leaf. We're in structural surplus. Yes, with this particular proposal, there will be a buffer of around $1.3 million. That's a good thing. That means we're financially responsible. Because you know what? If we um, go the easy way out and just vote purely on emotion and go with the, the lowest rate rise, you know what eventually happens? What happens in um, New South Wales? What's happened in a lot of uh, councils in Victoria where they've gone into bankruptcy because of short-term thinking. This is financially re uh, responsible. It's sustainable. And it's, it's the right thing to do. And, and, and tonight, I spoke of a particular problem intersection, uh, well, a number of problem roads in Virginia, problem intersections in my ward, problem intersections um, all, all across the, the city, right across the city. You know what people really want at the end of the day? Yes, they want their rates to be as cheap as possible, of course, but they want value for money. They want delivery for their rates. The people that I spoke to in relation to those roads that I'm advocating for in Virginia couldn't care less. Sorry, they couldn't care less about 7.9%. They know that this is the, the economic environment. You have to keep pace with inflation. What they want instead is us to use our rates and to put them, direct them in the right places. That's what we need to be doing, councillors. Um, Councillor Arifi uh, said and I say this respectfully, he said that um, the $1.1 million that's been allocated for growth management, perhaps money could have been used elsewhere. Um, well, my understanding as an elected member that's been here for nine years is that Mr Green and his predecessor, in terms of efficiency and effectiveness, have delivered over $10 million over the last six, seven, eight years. So the question is, how much more, how much further can he go? You've got to be realistic. Um, of course, we should be pushing our CEO to, to continue to find efficiencies in our budget. And I'm all for that, but he's done that. And I'm concerned with the backlog of projects in the next three, four years. Projects that people in my ward, right throughout the city, are crying out for. The right thing, the responsible thing, is to vote for 7.91%. Um, we are not going above inflation. 110,000 residents or thereabouts are in our city. Of those 110,000 residents, 45 people 
put forward written submissions, and half of which were for it or, or indifferent. Only 24, 22 were against it. And I don't say that flippantly because, as Councillor Baker remembers, four or five years ago, I, I came against this council with the rate review. And we had thousands of people out there. We had thousands of submissions. So there's a time and place. The time and place tonight is to support this. Thank you. Councillor Baker has a right to close as she wishes, as everyone's spoken in the debate. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Mr Mayor, first of all, I'd like to appreciate all of the comments. I think, to a person, we've all spoken. And, uh, and I think that, that shows that we have a, a very healthy respect for the Chamber, if, if nothing else. But just in summing up, I'd, I'd like to say that if we don't support the annual business plan as we proposed it tonight, the negative results that will occur are cumulative. And that will result in much larger rate increases. We've been through this scenario twice before in my experience. The last time we had to put rates up nearly 12%. And that's the result of not taking the appropriate action at the appropriate time. And what I would like to say is that this council is not about individual elected members achieving success for their specific ward. It's about working together as a group to achieve a citywide equitable spread of services. And this budget is a one-off opportunity to stabilise our sustainability and move forward. And the small surplus that we are hoping to achieve is to buffer any costs of pressures that are completely beyond our control. And we've all experienced those. The new elected member have seen two big ones in the past six months. And as Councillor Alonuzan has just said recently, that we have spent almost eight months looking at this budget, and it has been almost unanimous right the way through, and suddenly there's divisive and different, different opinions. But I would commend it to you. It's about our long-term sustainability and looking after those people who are indeed vulnerable and who are suffering. There was a bus trip today and we went to all of those places where we do service our more vulnerable communities and those sort of things would have to be identified and services cut and capital works cut not to the advantage of our community and not to the advantage of our city. So I would commend this to you. Councillors, we have the motion that's before us. I won't read through it as we have got the updated version with all the relevant numbers, which is the one that is on your tables. So I'll put that, those in favour, those against. I declare that I declare that carried. Division's been called by Councillor Hall. So those voting for the motion, if they can rise in their place. And to assist the minute taker, that voting for is Councillor Marsh, Councillor Kerrison, Councillor Baker, Councillor Onyuzans, Councillor Halls, Councillor Rentoulis, Councillor Smallwood-Smith, Councillor Strowett, Councillor Smilgenic, and Councillor Craig. The motion is carried. We then move on to item 14 at six, the adoption of the 23-24 long-term financial plan and attachment. Councillor Marsh. Yeah, thanks, Mayor Docky. Happy to, uh, to to support it, and obviously, it just makes common sense. If you're going to support the first one, you're going to support the next uh, one or two uh, documents. It does make sense only to do one of three or two of three. So, I look forward to uh, supporting this. So, councillors, before I call for a seconder, you would see that um, our yellow has been updated, which is set out and adopted as the attachment from the previous motion, which is now being carried. Set out the relevant attachment. Now that we have the relevant documents and the relevant numbers. Does the item find a seconder? Happy seconded by second. Councillor Strowett. Do you wish to speak? No, thank you. Does any other councillor wish to speak? If no other councillor wishes to speak, then I'll put, you, put the motion. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Division. Uh, division's been called by Councillor Marsh. So those voting for the motion, if you can rise in your place. And for the ease of the minute taker, that's all members bar Councillor Bayani and Councillor Arifi. The item is carried. Oh, sorry, carry it Sonoris as well, Councillor Norris. And the motion is carried. We move on to item 14.6, which we've just done. So item 14.7, the adoption of 23-24 strategic asset management plan. 
Councillor Ma. Yeah, happy to, uh, to support that and echo what I said before. No point not voting for the annual business plan and not supporting 14.7. It just doesn't make sense. I'll look forward to it. Get through. So find a seconder. Seconded by Councillor Strout. Yes, I agree with Councillor Marsh. Thank you. Any other councillors wishing to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Division has been called by Councillor Halls. So the motion is set aside. Those voting for the motion, if you can rise in your place. And for the ease of the minute taken, that's all members bar Councillor Viani, Councillor Norris, who's sitting down. So I've got you this time, Councillor Norris, and Councillor Arifi. The motion is carried. We move on to staff reports on a 15-1 appointment of council assessment panel members on page 770. Councillor Onyuz ends. Yeah, happy to move that, Mayor. Thank you. Is it fine? A seconder. Councillor Halls. Does the mover and seconder wish to speak? We've got Councillor Onyuz. Councillor Onyuz ends moved it. Seconded by Councillor Halls. Mover and seconder don't wish to speak. Does any other councillors wish to speak? They're not. Then I'll put that. Those in favour. Those against, I declare that carried. Move on to item 15.2, budget update report. Move the recommendation. Moved by Councillor Baker. Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Smallwood-Smith. I'm presuming the mover and seconder don't wish to speak. Does any other councillor wish to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against, I declare that carried. Nil informal discussion. Move on to item 17 1 strategic land purchase. Just wait for a couple of those members. Mm. Just wait go. Councillors, do we have somebody wishing to move? We're going to confidence under section 92 and section 93B that an order is made with the exclusion of the public except for those that are listed on the screen. Moved by Councillor Arifi. Yep. And seconded by Councillor Onyazans. I'm presuming the move and the second who don't wish to speak. No, does any other councillor wish to speak? If not, thank you. Can I have members of the gallery not interrupt the meeting? Thank you. I warn the members of the gallery. Did you know your food scraps should... So I'll put the motion from Councillor Arifi and seconded by Councillor Onyazans. Those in favour? Those against? I have to take that vote again. I have to remind councillors that you must be seated. You cannot vote with your hand standing up and putting your hand up. So I'll need to take that vote again. If you are planning to vote, you need to be seated in your seat or have left the chamber. So I'll put that motion again. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. I ask that the doors be closed.